The Girl Scout cookie time sign just won't stay, won't stay up. Can't imagine why not. Maybe it's no longer Girl Scout cookie time. What do you think? Oh, oh yes, hi guys. Uh, well, it is now officially Thursday night. That would be November 14th, 2019. So it is Thursday. So uh, I get to bring you my official weekly uh, depressed collapsitarian wine. For those of you uh, who have any interest in sitting around listening to me whine. So you don't need to send me a comment about what a whiny little bitch I am. Uh, this is a whine. This is not a rant. If you don't want to sit around and listen to a whiny little bitch, bitch and piss and moan and whine, then don't listen to it. Go somewhere else, you whiny little bitch. Uh, this is a whine, not a rant. Okay, with that stated clearly for the record, so uh, I am now, I am now, well, let's see, I need to do some, blah, 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 blah. 58 hours, 58 hours I have been sitting in this uh, isolation chamber, this 8 by 10 foot freezing isolation chamber out in the middle of fucking nowhere. So it has been 58 hours since I have had personal contact, you know what I'm talking about, just with a real breathing human being for uh, 58 hours. I have been completely I mean, isolated in the flesh from my fellow humans. And, and do remember, guys, I do have a roommate 30 feet from me. There's another human being right now. Uh, and uh, he, too, is a social isolate by choice. But as he, when we actually did get in a conversation about this, one time he did remind me, well, how much you forget that I spend eight hours a day, five days a week, you, you know, dealing with people. So when he comes home and shuts his door and doesn't speak, uh, you, you know, that is in addition to already be having social intercourse with uh, his fellow humans uh, for eight to ten hours a day. So uh, it's hard to really make that comparison. But <clears throat> So despite the fact that there is another human being 30 feet from where I'm sitting, it has now been 58 hours uh, with no contact, with a direct contact with another human being. And I'm just doing kind of, a, you know, a psychological study uh, on, the, on the depressive effects of isolation. Uh, and, and keep in mind, I mean, I have a telephone and email and of course you know talking to all of my little imaginary friends out there on YouTube so it's not like I'm sitting in, in a and I have my little dog so it's not exactly like I'm in an isolation chamber you know a sensory deprivation tank um, but even so it, it's certainly what I'm trying to uh, well obviously what I'm, I'm trying to figure out is how to get out of this hole that I have dug in my life starting about 10 years ago when I ruined my life by coming down here 
into this shithole uh, called the Doomosphere, where I made the single biggest blunder of my life, and that was, uh, you know, choosing to uh, pull my head out of my ass and look around and understand how completely, totally fucked we are. That we are intractably fucked. There is no way out. That we're fucked. I'm fucked, you're fucked, we're all fucked, we're fucked. There's no getting around the fact. It makes no difference how we try to delude ourselves or whatever. We're fucked. I know this. There is no way to unknow the knowledge that you're fucked. So, I'm simply, you know, here at age 60 as I prepare to sell my house in uh, Texas and start my new life up there and well as a snowbird half my life in New York and half my life in Florida you know I'm figuring out how to to the best of my ability to dig myself out of this hole and as part of that process I'm trying to imagine what my life will look like for the rest of my life if I do not dig myself out of this hole and what I foresee for myself is, is, is just a pretty much just a bleak, lonely, bored out of my skull, depressing, endless trudge of misery is what I see. My, my future uh, is basically this diarrhea brown, hazy, just, uh, I, I'm sure there will be a few little moments of pleasure scattered in and there will be some moments of, you know, intense horror, but by and large, what, I, what I'm expecting the rest of my life to look like is just a, you know, a, 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 just a slow, steady spiraling down uh, each day, just a little bit more worse and, and more miserable than the day before. Uh, just, uh, just kind of like a, I, I don't know, like a dripping stalactite or whatever, just this drip drip, drip, as I just descend in, in, into this, uh, you, you know, just ball of, uh, of hopelessness, despair, depression, boredom, and loneliness. This is the, the picture. So, uh, it, it's been interesting to, you know, to be keeping notes, and that's, this is what this is. This is what is called a vlog. This is a video blog that I am making basically for my own purposes. I don't even need to publish this. I want to come back to this series of videos, you know, periodically, you know, just to, just to track and to chronicle my, my downward spiral uh, into oblivion. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm spiraling downward into oblivion. I am sitting around waiting to die. I am waiting for the, the comforting arms of death to envelop me. That's what I, the, the only thing to look forward to in my life is the end of it. Uh, the sooner the better. And, th and this is one thing that's, you know, that I'm paying attention to is the more time that I spend in this uh, little torture chamber that I've created for myself is what, per how long do I go uh, between it's not so much suicidal ideation, I think that's the term for it, is it's not so much 
how much of my time do I spend fantasizing about committing suicide, which really isn't that much, but just fantasizing about dying. And uh, I, I will say uh, here in, in the end of day three, in the beginning of night three, and of course night is a hell of a lot worse than the day, that I do spend more time fantasizing about my death, for instance, than I do fantasizing about ever getting any pussy again. I have not masturbated one time uh, in three days. My sex drive has completely fucking plummeted uh, in, in, you know, it, it, it is, it is completely died. I, I, um, my testosterone levels, I'm surprised I'm not growing tits. I, I, I notice my beard hasn't been growing much in the past three days. That my interest in sex, uh, you, you, you know, I can't even, I, I can't even fantasize uh, about Doomer Chick Pussy uh, I, I, anymore. It's just, uh, it, it's just that my, the, the predominant, the, the, the more time I spend alone and just dwelling in my own private hell, uh, more and more of my time is consumed about wishing I was dead. So, uh, this is an interesting point. And, you know, just to chronicle the, uh, <clears throat> this most recent, uh, just, just over the cliff, um, catastrophic descent in, into the worst depression that I have been in in, uh, well in 2019 certainly this is the worst depression that I have been in, I mean bar none. Uh, there is no close second place and, and of course I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to re review the causes of it. Now of course and, and, and some of this will be tested tomorrow. It really is supposed to be a beautiful, bright, sunny day tomorrow. Now, of course, this this um, this newest depression. I mean, it it unbelievably tracks with this um, with this Arctic blast that we had. This depression. Uh, it, it, it's like the drop in my mood pretty much mirrors the, you know, the, the catastrophic drop in temperatures. When was it? It was, was it on Monday that we went? Yeah, it was on Monday where in a period of less than two hours, the temperature in Austin, Texas dropped from... Uh, like 75 to 45 and with all the attendant north winds and then the, the you know the rain and the sleet moved in so uh, obviously a, a lot of what's been going on with me this week uh, can be traced to that um, it will be interesting to see when I wake up tomorrow and get out there in the sun and I'm, you know, my plan for tomorrow, if I can find the energy, and I think I will be able to, is to, you know, finally get back to the goddamn rototilling I was supposed to be doing on Monday. Then I'm going to go back, make another double round trip, put another 75 miles on my uh, odometer on my gas sucking truck, you know, to go get that gas sucking rototiller uh, so I can plant my wildflower seeds. 
uh, as I sink deeper and deeper into financial ruin, uh, spending between the rototiller rental and the gas in my truck and whatnot, spending about 60 or $70 to plant $20 worth of wildflower seeds. So it will be interesting to see if my mood, and I do think it will improve with the sunshine uh, tomorrow. And then, of course, you, you know, the, the other thing that going hand in hand um, with this depression is, uh, you know, the collapse and fall of my latest doomer chick romance, my latest ill-fated doomer chick romance, which was really, you know, for those of you who are not aware of this, a few of you know the details of this more than others, I really did uh, deceive myself, apparently, in, into believing that I had finally, that the universe had finally presented me with the, basically, the woman of my dreams, the doomer chick that I had been waiting for and trying to manifest for 10 years appeared in my life a few weeks ago. Uh, and, and, and I actually believed against all the outrageous odds, and, and, and uh, you can imagine the odds, that I was actually going to build a romance uh, with, with this woman. And what it did, it just... The, the whole process, the whole romance lasted about three weeks. And what happened during those three weeks is something was awakened in me. And uh, I, I, I am not going to deny that part of it was uh, what was awakened in, awakened in me was, was my crotch. Okay, I'm not going to pretend like that the sexual attraction had nothing to do with it. Okay, it, it, it was part of the mix, but it was a small part of the mix. It was a healthy a natural, healthy part of the mix. Uh, so, uh, for anybody out there listening to this, you know, to cheapen uh, what I felt for this woman, to act like it was only my crotch falling in love with her crotch, you're, you're obviously projecting. I, I, I honestly felt like uh, that, you know, for the first time since I've been down here in the Doomosphere, that I actually had found a woman that I could build a life with, you, you know, in, in New York and whatnot, that the universe had, uh, there were a few problems we had to work out, uh, shall we say, but they for some reason I did not consider them insurmountable problems and so I figured based on my own fantasies and I'm blaming none of what I'm getting ready to say on this woman uh, none of what I, did. I, I am I am uh, accepting 100 percent of the responsibility for for the mess that I that I'm in with this woman is but it, it awakened in me just feelings that I have never felt since I've been down here in this rabbit hole. Feelings that, that, that have been buried so deeply that I, you know, I, I had abandoned all hope on ever feeling these feelings again. And then when they were awakened in me, uh, they, 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 they overtook me is what they did. And, and despite the protestations of, of several of, of, 
of my tribes members, particularly one of my one of my buddies, uh, a, a friendship with a male buddy of mine has been forever destroyed over this. He he was so furious at me for uh, falling in love with this woman that and, and I believe him this time uh, that he will never speak to me again. He w he was so furious at me. You know, and uh, he was trying that the last two communications we had that my buddy and I had, you know, he was saying, uh, Hambone, this woman does not want to hear that you love her, that she's your soulmate, uh, that you miss her, blah, 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 that, uh, that women do not want to hear this, nice guys finish last. Uh, that, uh, you know, you're, you're simply going to make a, a, a complete total fool out of yourself, basically, by making romantic overtures to this woman. So, for about two weeks, I, uh, I ignored my buddy's advice and and, and I actually got into this whole little romantic fantasy that this that this woman uh, did not have a, th 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 this woman has has plenty enough in her life without uh, w without uh, getting in a romance with Hambone Littletail. I assure you that uh, that I nowhere was on her radar. I mean, I think she thought I was kind of cute. Uh, I, but obviously, the the woman's this woman's feelings for me were were nowhere in the same league. So, I made a complete fool out of myself for about two weeks. You know, sending her all these little love notes and uh, digging. You know, sending her all of these these little corny syrupy love songs. Uh, every day I would send her a love song and uh, tell her how I uh, was uh, kissing her picture goodnight every night and how she was uh, consuming, uh, just completely consuming my life, and every bit of which was true. And I, I started noticing that my my tokens of affection were not being reciprocated. It wasn't exactly like that I was being ghosted by this woman, but she was doing absolutely nothing to encourage my romantic overtures, shall we say. I think we, we had one in three weeks, we did. We had two phone conversations. We had two phone conversations, and she might. Let's see. With me in the in the with me sending her, I would say somewhere between twenty and fifty emails. I probably received three or four emails and what they were these you know so I would I would send all of these corny romantic uh, love letters to this woman and just completely unacknowledged ignored uh, no reciprocation or encouragement then I would get these very very oblique cryptic short emails that just speaking in in this weird metaphorical riddle language uh, just completely dancing around in any sort of you know coherent direct communication with me that she clearly did not want to have any sort of direct communication uh, so finally, it was Monday afternoon, right when you, you know the uh, you, you know when the weather changed, and 
and I could feel this depression coming, you know, barreling towards me, I just sent her an email and said, darling, uh, you, you know, don't worry, this is the last, uh, the last love song you will ever receive from Hambone Little Tail. I sent her the Should I Stay or Should I Go Now by The Clash. <laughs> was my parting shot <coughs> and just told her and, 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 and she knows this is true that uh, you know what Hambone Little Tail has to offer you and uh, if you decide you ever want, uh, if you have any interest in, in being my woman uh, that I'm keeping the light on for you in my heart and uh, for the first time in her life, I received a, a short, sweet email from her saying thank you. Thank you for dumping me. Uh, I, and, and I could just hear this big sigh of relief uh, coming through the waves that uh, the, the, the greatest thing I could do to this woman was to uh, stop pestering her with love letters and love songs and uh, so here I am back in, into this but 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 what it did what that whole experience did was it is is that it really drilled into me the absolute hopelessness of me ever being able to find a woman, at least as long at the very, as long as I am down here in this doomosphere, bullshit that I will be alone until the day I die, that I am not ever going to, uh, you, you know, to find some doomer chick. Uh, just, just the the nature of doomer chicks is that they're damaged goods. And I'm not picking on women here. Doomers were damaged goods. That uh, as long as I am a doomer, that, that any woman on this planet, whether she, even if she is a doomer chick, she will be inheriting a basket of, of damaged goods. And uh, if... If I do ever find another Doomer chick, she is going to be an emotionally scarred uh, basket of damaged goods w with a you know with a goddamn freight train of baggage uh, associated with her, and the the only way that uh, you know that I'm going to find a, a quote, normie chick, is that I need to get out of the doomosphere. And so, you know, it puts me one more time in, the, in this absolute, untenable uh, position. It, it is just the latest, uh, and, and, it, it, and this is true for any doomer male or female, it's this one more position that where this the frying pan versus the fire. That either way we're fucked. That if we do actually, against all odds, find a, a romantic partner down here in the doomosphere, we're going to be inheriting uh, you can't be down here in this uh, rabbit hole w without being a fucked up, uh, you know, emotionally, probably mentally, psychologically, spiritually damaged person. Uh, it, it, it's just part of the territory what happens when you pull your head out of your ass and and walk away from being a clueless fucking moron, otherwise known as a normie, uh, you're 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 gonna turn into a fucking doomer, 
and and, and, and you're pretty much going to be worthless as a romantic partner to to anybody, including another doomer. But then, so we're going to call that the frying pan for a doomer to fall in love with a, another doomer is like falling into a hot frying pan, but then the goddamn choice is uh, if, if, if I actually do find a woman who actually appreciates getting uh, love letters and love songs and actually appreciates being treated like a lady uh, and, and being appreciated for the, uh, you know, for the woman that she is, uh, if, if, if she's a woman who, in, who actually likes to be treated nice by, by a nice guy, then she's going to be a fucking clueless fucking moron flibberty gibbet normie. And there's no goddamn normie uh, chick in the world who is going to put up uh, w w with a fucking mess like me. Uh, so which means I need to turn back into a fucking normie. But you can't. Once a doomer, always a doomer. I mean, I, you can try to fake it. But that's all you're going to be doing is faking it. If, if you try to, if you're a doomer and, and you try to pretend like you're not a doomer, and you know, let's say that I just uh, yanked down Humpty Dumpty Tribe and Collapse Chronicles, I completely walk away from YouTube where there is no record. Uh, of me uh, out there for you know women on pile of fish or whatever to find uh, simply because I go into hiding I'm still gonna be a fucking doomer and so uh, you, you, you know the more and more I realize that this is just one more way it's just one more frying pan versus the fire choice. It's just that I, that I clearly understand that I'm fucked, that, that I am never going to find love. Uh, I, 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 it's never going to happen for me again. Uh, I, I, I am going to be alone until the day I die. I, I just need to stop the fucking fantasy. Stop looking for these goddamn normie chicks on pile of fish. Stop looking for a doomer chick down here in the doomosphere because e even if I find either one, uh, it ain't gonna work out. And I'm fucked. And so here I sit, uh, sitting here for the third night in a row, I'm 20 minutes from Austin, Texas. You know, Austin, Texas, the live music capital of the world. The live music capital of the world is 20 minutes from here. 20 minutes from me, there are thousands and thousands of people out partying, you know, and, and, and my quote, friends, my clueless, lovable friends. So here I am. I have, uh, so, I have one pickin' party tomorrow night to go to, another pickin' party Saturday night to go to, I, yeah, next Friday night I have a pickin' party to go to, next Saturday night I have a pickin' party to go to, so, right now, uh, I, I'm invited to four parties, yet I... I do not have a date to any of them. Uh, so, so I will be just, you know, going to these parties of my clueless, lovable friends. I told you I found this friend of mine on goddamn advertising on pile of fish. 
and I invited her to go to this picking party with me Saturday night. You know, go out to a nice dinner and to this picking party. And I and I, you know, she's a normie. Can't even. Uh, I cannot even get my. You know, women that I've known for twenty fucking years. Uh, to go, you know, just uh, just as a friend, I, I have invited three different women, uh, three different women, uh, to be my date Saturday night. I mean, all of these, you know, friends of mine, normie, uh, female friends of mine, and I have uh, gotten two no's and one ninety percent no. And so uh, that's my love life, and I, I just need to accept this fact that I am never going to have a woman in my life, and uh, you, you know, among other things, and just deal with it. Uh, I, you know, all of you MGTOW guys. Uh, I am not MGTOW. I have been going my own way for 10 fucking years. I'm sick and tired of it. I want a goddamn girlfriend. Uh, I, I, I never imagined. I've, you know, from the time I was, what, 12 until the time I was 50, I never went more than six months in my life without having a, a, you know, I was a serial monogamist is what I was, but if, if I did not have a woman, if I was not part of a couple, uh, it, it, it would completely uh, drive me crazy. It would be the number one focus of my life to get a woman. And it never took me more than six months until I came down this goddamn rabbit hole. And uh, ten fucking years uh, I've been, uh, I've been, you know, spent looking for this mythical creature. And then the universe uh, dangles one in front of me and I fall in love with her. And this is what I fucking get. I, I, I get the message, it ain't gonna happen, Hambo. And uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm sitting around here in my little 8 foot by 10 foot uh, little prison cell, uh, my little solitary confinement uh, prison cell here for the third night in a row, uh, just, just, just understanding that I am going to be lonely and, and isolated and bored out of my ass and occasionally horny and uh, you know mainly just depressed and suicidal uh, right up until the time that my death wish uh, o overtakes my life wish. Uh, but in the meantime I'm, I'm simply gonna try to manifest going to bed alone and not waking up. I've been doing this for many years. I've manifested a lot of stuff. I have not been able to manifest uh, going to sleep and never waking up, but I, I am putting every bit uh, of my energy, everything that I've learned uh, you know, from Don Juan and the Mushroom God and everyone else uh, trying to whet my manifestation skills simply to go to sleep and never wake up. And anyway, that is where I am at hour 58. Uh, into this um, descent into the ninth ring of hell. Now that I've finished talking to my little imaginary friends, I've got about four more hours 
to sit here with my thumb up my ass. I guess I'll go back on to Netflix and see if I can find a, another thing to get my mind off uh, my depression other than a story about the Holocaust and Ivan the Terrible. Bye, guys.